So, um, hi, my name is Nathan Naveen, and I'm here to speak about securing open source with OpenSSF Criticality Score. So, let me first introduce myself. I'm a 10th grader, I love to solve algorithms, and I've solved over a thousand leak code problems. I enjoy competing in coding competitions, I contribute to open source, and I'm a Jitsu practitioner. Okay, so before we dive into the demo, let me give you a quick overview of what Criticality Score does. To do this, let's take an analogy of ordering a pizza. In this analogy, we can only afford to add one topping, but we want to pick the topping that's the worst for our health because we're away from home at a conference and just want to indulge. So we can mathematically calculate the badness of each topping using factors like fat, sodium, and carbs, and then assign weights to each of these factors. For instance, if I have high cholesterol, then fat might be worse for me than carbs, so fat will get a higher weight. We can then combine the weights and nutritional information using an algorithm to calculate the score of each topping. We can use a score to find out which topping is the worst. So this is an analogy, so none of these values are real, and the Credit Cali score algorithm isn't just by multiplying two values together. Um, let me transition to an example repo instead of the analogy. I uh, use the analogy to give a quick overview of what Credit Cali score does. So Credit Cali score functions similarly to our analogy, except our goal isn't to pass out after dinner. We give Credit Cali score data, such as the contributor count, commit frequency, number of closed issues, and then assign weights to each of these values. We then use an algorithm developed by Rob Pike to calculate the score of your dependencies. This score provides insight into a project's significance and helps you determine how many resources to allocate to it. So this is an example repo, and I'll explain how it works in a few slides. So Credit Cali score uses signals to calculate the score of your dependencies. Um, for example, when was the last update? What's the contributor count? And how many closed issues are there? Going back to our analogy, signals are factors like fat and carbs. So what are weights? In our analogy, we said that weights are how much we value a factor like fat and carbs. In Credit Cali score, weights are how much we value a signal. For example, if the weight of the number of contributors is equal to 2, and the weight of the number of organizations is equal to 1, we value the number of contributors more than the number of organizations coming to a specific repo. So the Credit Cali score algorithm, developed by Rob Pike, may look a little daunting. So I've got this slide to help simplify and explain it. The Credit Cali score algorithm has got three variables, A of I, S of I, and T of I. And A of I is the weight of the ith signal, S of I is the value of the ith signal, and T of I is the threshold of the ith signal. By threshold, I mean the maximum value that the signal can take. Uh, so before we start explaining the algorithm, let me give you a quick explanation of summation. Summation is the process of adding the results of a given function over a range of numbers. In this example, we've got the function f of n equals n and the range of numbers 1 through 20. So we evaluate our function for each number in that range to get 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to 20. So, okay, back to algorithm. We can first simplify a little bit, and then substitute out log 1 plus s of i over log 1 plus max of s of i and t of i in for x of i. Now our equation looks similar to a weighted arithmetic mean. A weighted arithmetic mean is basically a better way to calculate average than just a regular arithmetic mean. We're calculating the average on x of i with the weight being a of i. And on the following slide, I'm going to show an example of this in use. And it's going to use a simplified version of the Credit Cali square equation. The summation of z of i over the summation of a of i with z of i equaling a of i times x of i. So as I said before, we're going to be using, I'm going to be explaining this example repo. It's the same example repo, except now I've added a threshold to each signal so that we can use the Credit Cali square algorithm on it. Um, and as I said on the previous slide, I'm going to be explaining it using the equation, the summation of z of i over the summation of a of i with z of i equaling a of i times x of i. Since we only have two signals, contributor count and commit frequency, i can only equal 0 and 1. So the summation of z of i over the summation of a of i is basically equal to z of 0 plus z of 1 over a of 0 plus a of 1. So to solve this, we can start off by solving for z of 0. 
we can substitute 2 in for a of 0, 200 in for s of 0, and 5,000 in for t of 0 to get z of 0 equaling 1.2452. We can do something si similar for z of 1 to get z of 1 equaling 0, uh, 0.497. Now that we know z of 0, z of 1, a of 0, and a of 1, we can get our critic chi score of 0 0.5807. Okay, enough explaining, on to the demo. In this demo, we're going to calculate the critic chi score of all dependencies of some open SSF repos. We're going to first calculate the score of default weights and then calculate the score of modified weights and compare them. So first we can get all the dependencies and then parse them as GitHub repo URLs. So basically anything after repo name like file names, folder names, version numbers can go for a toss. We are in this demo I'm going to be storing all of these in a file called parse.txt. We can then run Criti Cali score on parse.txt to get our signal data. We can then run the scorer on the signal data to get our uh, with default weights to get our most and least critical projects. So to do something we can do something similar to get modified weights. We can run the scorer on the same signal data, but this time with modified weights. We, in this demo, I've changed the commit frequency weight from one to ten. And with original weights, our most critical projects have scores of 0.83 and 0.80. While with modified weights, our most critical projects have scores of 0.69 and 0.66. This is a huge difference. Uh, in the end, anyone can calculate the critic high score of a project and use their own weights to do it. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about me, hit up this QR code. Thank you. Uh, it's a lightning talk. Wait, do I have, can I ask questions? I mean, can I? Yeah. Uh, so question for you on, you mentioned it was easy to use your own weights. Is it also easy to use your own uh, bits of GitHub data? For example, can I mute the organization part if all I'm looking at are repositories from my own organization? I understand what you mean. So, so I've got the, I'm looking at the criticality data, uh, and you're, you're looking at it for sort of everything, right? To see the most critical things yeah. anywhere. But if I want to only look at what's most critical within my own set of repositories that I own, uh, am I able to easily sort of turn off some of the fields as being important? So... I think you can calculate it with just, you can just calculate with certain weights. So, as I said before. So I can zero a weight. Yeah. Um, Good point. Like, you can just calculate with certain signals. So, in this demo, like this example repo, I've just calculated with two signals. Mm -hmm. You can just basically just delete some of the signals for your repository and just, I guess, calculate it with just those signals. Sweet. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I guess any other questions? Yes. How are those weights chosen, out of curiosity? So weights are objectionable. Like, it's up to you. Um, if you value the number of contributors more than the number of organizations, the number of contributors will get a higher weight than the number of organizations for you. The score is determined how much by what you value. So it's there are default weights, but you can edit the weights to your preferences. Uh, anything else? Okay, well, thank you.